now we're going to have uh, Laurent Levy, CEO, founder of Nanobiotics, and you may be the only physical chemistry PhD in the room, but I don't know, I would lay bets on that. <laughs> so good morning, everyone, <clears throat> and thank you for being here. So before starting, I will just invite you uh, to not read at this disclaimer because it's a bit long, but to go on our website when you have time to look at all the profile risk of our company and what we are developing. But today, uh, we're here to talk about the science beyond NBTXR3, beyond nanobiotics, and I will not start with science. I will start with <clears throat> Henry Ford, because not exactly saying what he said, he said something around if he had asked to his customer or people what they wanted, they would have asked faster horses. What does it mean? It means that if you just look at the world with one reality, or the reality which you have today, you shaping the results of your question. The way you're asking yourself a question will shape the results and the answer you will get. <clears throat> As you know, Henry Ford did not make faster horses. He was working in the car industry and developed this. So how this relate to radiation therapy? So looking at this question, how can we improve the dose in the tumor without improving the dose in surrounding tissue if you ask yourself the question this way, then you're shaping the answer. You will end up with a better equipment, with an equipment that will make better delivery of radiation, more precise, trying to spare LC tissue, but you won't change the fundamental of radiation therapy. So why we did develop something which is different and disruptive compared to improving equipment? Because the initial question we asked ourselves was not how to improve the dose in the tumor without improving the dose in surrounding tissue. 20 years ago, uh, when I was doing my PhD, the question I had in mind was, uh, can I influence a cell from a physical standpoint and then try to modify the biology without touching the cells from the inside? That was a question I had in mind, almost always. And I did answer this question during my postdoc at Sunny at Buffalo by doing this experiment. So you see almost nothing at the moment, but what I did here is I started to build nanoparticle, small magnetic particle, the same one, the same magnet that you have on your fridge, but very tiny. And on the surface of those magnetic particles, I have added some very specific biological agent able to target the membrane of these cells and the nucleus of these cells. And then I have added some luminophore on the surface of the nano to be able to visualize those nanoparticles. So every dark spot you see here, there are small nanoparticles emitting light uh, that are present in the surface of the cells and in the nucleus of the cells. So then when I have incubated those cells with those nanoparticles, I have taken a big magnet and I met this magnet spin and at the same time recording the video. And what I have seen is I was able to make the nucleus spin of this cell without touching the cell. So that's the experiment roughly 20 years ago I have done that made me think that, okay, it's doable. We can, with nanoparticle, influence the physics of the cell. And years later, um, around 2007, in our company at Nanobiotics, we started to develop this approach on nano X-ray. Nano X-ray because when we looked at the radiotherapy field, uh, we made the same understanding that there are some big unmet medical need for some of the patients. We know that almost, say, 60% of patients having cancer will receive radiation therapy. And among those millions of patients, there are a big pocket that needs better radiation therapy, either for local control, because like in head and neck, sometimes they will die from local invasion of the tumor, or those patients, if you can control the tumor, they will start making metastasis and they will die from the systemic disease. Some other patients will need to reduce the dose to reduce side effect. And some of the patients getting radiation also sometimes have already metastasis. So you need to transform the radiation into a systemic treatment if you want to have an impact. So this question about how to improve the dose in the tumor without improving the dose in surrounding tissue, we did answer it with uh, NBTXR3 uh, technology. What is that? So that's an injectable product which is meant to be injected only once in the tumor before the first session of radiation therapy. And we wish this to do not change the rest of the patient flow. Meaning you don't change the equipment, you don't change the way you define the dosimetry, the protocol for the patient. The only difference is at one time, 
let's say one day before the first station, you can inject this product directly into the tumor. And what is this product? This product is made of crystalline inorganic nanoparticle, 50 nanometer diameter particle. So why do we need this to be small? Because you want those particles to be able to go into the cell to provide their effect. But being small is not enough. We need those particles to absorb X-ray. And for that, the physics says that the higher is the density of a material, the higher is the X-ray absorption. So we have designed those particles with a very specific material, which is named hafnium oxide, HFO2, because hafnium is a very heavy atom with a lot of electrons, very dense, and it absorbs a lot of X-ray. If we have chosen HFO2 also, it's because that's a very inert material. So you can combine the absorption, which will give benefit, with the lower possible uh, safety issue because that's a very inert material. So how does this work? Here you have two cancer cells, one on the left, which is a regular cancer cell, and one on the right, which is the same cancer cell with nanoparticle inside. Every dark spot you see in the right cells, there are hundreds of nanoparticles that have penetrated the cell. But let's go back to this regular cancer cell. If you apply radiation therapy into this cell, let's say to gray, for example, then you will start interacting with the water and the cells and create some random damage into these cells. And when you increase the dose of radiation, you increase the number of random damage. Now if you go to the other cancer cell that has nanoparticle, what you will do is that you will absorb around those nanoparticles a huge quantity of energy and will deliver in a very small volume, ninefold, the usual energy you could do with radiation alone. I think this slide is critical because that's where you see the fundamental difference of delivering a different radiation therapy. It's not amplified radiation, it's radiation where you can deliver in a nanovolume a huge quantity of energy. And this obviously will provide different type of damage in the cell, will provide different type of cell death, will provide a different radiation therapy. So delivering this big energy into a cell, what it does? It obviously creates damage into the cell, structural damage, DNA damage and this will lead to a direct cell death, apoptosis, necrosis, and so on. But what we found out recently, just like radiation, but different, we also create some immunogenic cell death and activate the sting pathway, which allow the immune system to recognize this tumor and getting equipped against it, and potentially also having a systemic effect by starting the fire Dr. Raven was talking about previously. So we have a very physical mode of action that triggers some subsequent biological consequences uh, for uh, the cells. So now we have some background of the product as we have been using this across a number of hospitals in 15 countries in US, Europe, and Asia. We've been treating more than 200 patients with this product across different tumor type and we have established uh, the safety profile of this product and also made uh, the proof of concept for this new mode of action. That's the first time in this world that we have proven, sorry, that uh, this new mode of action works into human. So where do we go now and what's the focus of uh, the development for this product? Sorry. So, <clears throat> what we know, it's a physical mode of action which has a universal type of um, activity. So it could be applicable across oncology and especially across the lead tumor. And this could be used frontline treatment, but also in some of the metastatic setting, and we'll come back on that later. We have established recently the clinical proof of concept in our phase three soft tissue sarcoma trial showing a superiority of the product plus radiation versus radiation alone. We have shown that we have doubled the rate of complete response in patients by adding this product. And sarcoma is a very tough disease, but I will come back on that later. We think head and neck is a very critical indication for this product to be able to demonstrate the medical value of it. We will talk a lot about head and neck later, but in this particular indication, and especially in the population we are targeting with advanced head and neck patient not being eligible for cisplatin, just getting radiation, then here there's a big need for local control. 
And what we have shown in our phase one is that we may be able to have a huge local control impact with this product and also potentially a good impact on overall survival. And so far, with a very good safety, has no serious adverse event has been observed by the addition of our product. Then there is also all those patients getting metastatic disease at the time they could receive or receive radiation therapy. And here we have again a program in the patient that are uh, resistant to PD-1, so meaning that are progressing under PD-1 or have a stable disease. So the 80% of patients that do not respond with checkpoint inhibitors. And we have a trial here, uh, but Dr. Sewards will talk about it um, a, a bit later. So that's where we focus the development of this technology because that's where we think we should demonstrate the value. And then we also have other indication to expand the usage of this product. But let's focus on the proof of concept in soft tissue sarcoma. So soft tissue sarcoma is a rare type of cancer that is very hard to treat. Uh, the population we are addressing uh, in this phase three trial are patients having advanced soft tissue sarcoma in limbs or tranquil. And at the time of diagnosis, they cannot go to surgery because we know that if we go for surgery right now, we won't be able to provide them a good surgery allowing to cure them. So in this patient population, <clears throat> especially in Europe, we use radiation therapy as a new adjuvant treatment to try to kill and reduce the tumor to make it operable and to be able to make a good surgery. The ultimate goal for this patient will be to remove the old tumor, being sure you have not left any cancer cell in the body at the time of surgery. And if you do it well, then you cure the patient. So the endpoints in this trial were a pathological complete response, so that was the primary endpoint, so meaning the percentage of patients that get complete response, meaning all the cancer cells or almost all the cancer cells are dead in the tumor post-treatment. And the secondary endpoint was the ability to provide a R0 surgery, so a surgery with clean margin. In this trial, we've been treating 89 patients with the standard of care, which was 25 sessions of two gray of radiation over five weeks, plus a small period of recovery and uh, a surgery when doable. And in the tested arm, we have treated 87 patients with uh, the same standard of care plus one injection of the product one day before the first session of radiation. So in this trial, we've been recruiting 180 patients. Uh, only 176 patients have been randomized because four of them uh, were not included in the trial because three did not have soft tissue sarcoma after the biopsy to confirm what they had, and the fourth one did not have the right criteria to be randomized. So 176 patients have been randomized in the trial. So why uh, pathological complete response is an interesting endpoint because this endpoint will show you the ability of the product to kill cancer cell on the top of radiation therapy. And that, let's say, a pure surrogate of the efficacy of the product. And in some cases also, when you look at literature, the improvement of complete pathological response improved the potential to improve survival for those patients. So this a uh, primary endpoint, pathological complete response, has been used and defined as per EORTC uh, guideline. And the uh, readout of this primary endpoint was centralized with a board and uh, blinded. So the statistical, statistical plan has been defined with different regulatory agencies. We have been running this trial, and we've been uh, calculating uh, the outcome of the trial based on the ITT intended to treat population uh, on, the, on this trial. So before going to the primary endpoint, what did we show? Something which is very important, that when we compare both harm, we have had the same number of patients getting the full radiation, the same number of patients getting the ability to go to surgery, meaning the addition of this product in the standard of care did not change the ability to deliver the full standard of care for the patient. And that's very important. In terms of safety, uh, nothing new did appear. We have a very good chronic safety profile with this product, like always seen in different populations. The only uh, noticeable toxicity we found is an acute immunological reaction at the time of injection, 
that we found in um, around 13%, uh, no sorry, 7.9% uh, of the patient in, uh, in this trial. So nothing uh, specific has been seen in delivering the standard of care with this product and the toxicity is manageable. So the primary endpoint, what did we get? If you look at the control arm, you had roughly 7.9% of the patient getting complete pathological response. And by adding the product, we have doubled this rate of complete response, which is not something trivial in soft tissue sarcoma. That's, as I said, a very hard to treat disease with chemo, with radiation, with many a biological approach. It's very hard to get that kind of response in sarcoma. And if you kill all those cancer cells, if you can reach almost 100% of dead cancer cell in the tumor, then you have destroyed the ability of the tumor to make metastasis. It's very important to be able to kill it. So this endpoint was very important also because that's a pure demonstration of the efficacy of the product. So the claim that we improved the destruction with this product has been proven into patient with this trial. And then, <clears throat> even though the trial was not designed to statistically meet the secondary endpoint, there was a difference big enough to show a statistical difference in terms of percentage of patient getting uh, R0 surgery. And there is a direct correlation in literature between R0 and survival for the patient in soft tissue sarcoma. So that's just top line data, but at ASTRO and ESMO, uh, you will be able to see the full data in soft tissue sarcoma during two oral presentations that have been submitted in the late breaking uh, abstract, and that will be uh, roughly uh, in, uh, in a month. So in a nutshell, um, we have this product, which is a new way to deliver radiation therapy that provide different type of radiation. And that has a physical universal mode of action, meaning virtually we could apply it in millions of patients. Then uh, sarcoma has been a very key development in this product, has this first and new mode of action, has been proven in this trial. But where the value is now in the front of us is head and neck and demonstrating that for those patients that are resistant to checkpoint, we can make a difference. We can transform them into responder. And then if it's working in that, it will also work in our other indication that prostate cancer, rectum cancer, and so on. And if we do that, then we can also go further and help those millions of patients getting radiation, either getting a more powerful and potent radiation or getting a less toxic radiation for the patients that are already cured with radiation today. So thank you for your attention, and uh, we're going to take some questions, if there are any.